everybody. My name is Arvind Trindad. I'm the director of endoscopy at Long Island Jewish Medical Center and associate professor at Hofstra Northwell. I'm here with Kara Raphael, who is our superstar fellow and will be our advanced endoscopy fellow for next year. We're here to discuss our article titled Remote Video Auditing in the Endosc Endoscopy Unit for Evaluation of Duodenoscope Reprocessing in a Tertiary Care Center. We wanted to start just by thanking the editors for publishing our article and allowing us to create this video. So Kara, please describe uh, the motivation for the study. Sure. So it's really about endoscopic safety and specifically ERCP. Um, bacterial infections are one of the possible risks of an ERCP, and they can really de be divided into two entities. Um, the first are endogenous infections that occur from the patient's own bacterial flora, um, such as if a ERCP doesn't clear a bile duct completely or if there's an inadvertent mucosal tear. Um, this can be prevented with good endoscopic technique. Um, the other kind of infection is exogenous bacterial infections, and this can occur from somebody else's bacterial flora being transmitted via something like a contaminated endoscope. In the last 10 years, there's been um, multiple outbreaks of highly morbid, multi-drug resistant bacterial infections like CRE that have been implicated to duodenoscopes, contaminated duodenoscopes. There's been a lot of attention in the endoscopy literature trying to figure out ways to reduce the bacterial transmission. We thought it would be interesting um, to evaluate this further. We found that multiple outbreaks were caused by human errors in duodenoscope reprocessing. We thought evaluating duodenoscope reprocessing and finding ways to improve this would help reduce bacterial transmission. Can you describe the study aims? Sure. So the aim of our study was twofold. It was to evaluate remote video auditing of duodenoscope reprocessing to see one, if it was feasible in a tertiary care center, and two, if it was effective as a compliance um, auditing tool. Remote video auditing is um, an interesting tool that's been used in the commercial industry, such as uh, meat packing and food reprocessing, and it's been showed to increase quality and safety in these fields. So what we did is we installed video cameras in the endoscope cleaning room and had off-site auditors who were trained in the steps of the reprocessing protocol um, evaluate every duodenoscope reprocessing procedure that occurred in our unit, and then they provided a score back to the endoscope cleaning technicians. If the scope um, met 100% uh, compliance with every step, it was released for use. If it didn't, it was reprocessed again. So Kara, tell me the study outcomes, please. So over a 17-month period, we audited 743 duodenoscope reprocessing procedures and over 32,000 individual steps. We found that RVA allowed for a sustained high-level compliance with duodenoscope reprocessing. It was about 90% overall compliant and 99.5% compliant per step. We identified um, steps in the protocol that had the lowest compliance that could be targeted with increased education, different reprocessing techniques, or possibly new du duodenoscope accessories. Um, we also evaluated the feasibility of RVA for duodenoscope reprocessing and found that it was feasible. It took about 38 minutes to reprocess the scope and another 38 minutes to audit the scope, which resulted in a, approximately one hour and 15 minute turnover time, which was fine for our institution. So what are the implications then for the study? So for institutions that are going to continue to use reusable duodenoscopes, we feel that it is extremely important to adhere to stringent duodenoscope reprocessing techniques. This is in order to reduce bacterial transmission from duodenoscopes. We showed in our study that RVA was able to help us with a sustained high-level compliance with duodenoscope reprocessing and was feasible at our institution. So do you think RVA will eliminate all exogenous infections then? I think it will reduce significantly endogenous infections, but it won't completely eliminate them. Um, there is a 2% failure rate of duodenoscope reprocessing despite strict adherence to the protocols, and this could be due to things like a biofilm that's hard to clean on, the uh, on any scope surface. So the only real way I feel to completely eliminate in, uh, bacterial transmissions is to use things like disposable or single-use duodenoscopes. Given we're in the COVID-19 pandemic and era, um, uh, any thought to expand the use of RVA to uh, both regular upperscopes and colonoscopes? Yes. So given the great success of our study, um, we actually are interested in using RVA 
with all types of scopes that we use in our unit. And at this time, we're evaluating the use of RVA in compliance with reprocessing endoscopes and colonoscopes for COVID positive patients um, because the risk of transmission is very concerning and we need to do what we can to mitigate that risk. I think that's all the time we have. Uh, we want to thank the endoscopy editors again, and uh, thank you for listening.